was the name of Steve Jobs' company, Apple Incorporated, inspired by Professor Arnold Errett and the mucusless diet healing system? Let's go find out. Before we do, look down below, click right now to get five free mucus-free recipes. Five recipes that will help you eliminate mucus from your body. And you'll also get some other, a few other bonuses. Click down below right now so you don't miss out on that opportunity. So in this video, we're going to do a little bit of research and explore the origins of the name Apple Incorporated to see if, in fact, Professor Arnold Eric, who has been suppressed, whose legacy they are trying to hide and suppress from the public, to see if he played a key role in Steve Jobs naming this world-renowned company, Apple Incorporated, that is, at this moment of recording this, the largest, most successful company in the world, at least according to the stock market. Apple is now the first U.S. public company to hit a $2 trillion market value. Apple's latest milestone comes just two years after it first crossed the $1 trillion mark. I'm Professor Spira. I'm a long-term mucusless diet healing system practitioner. Mucusless diet totally transformed my life. It's transformed the lives of thousands of people that I know personally. Very powerful information. It also allegedly transformed the life of Steve Jobs, whose work has transformed the lives of millions and millions of people. You might have Apple products, you might have an iPhone, or an iPod, or an iPad, or any kind of Apple product, but you have no clue that the name of that, the reason you're calling that Apple, is partly due to the works of Professor Arnold Errett and the mucusless diet healing system. Let's see if I'm just making this up or if this is true. We're gonna do a little bit of research. So join me in the office and let's do a little bit of study. And this, this is gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Come on, let's let's go. All right, so let's do a little bit of research and find out if indeed the mucuses diet and Arnold Errett truly inspired Steve Jobs to name his company Apple Incorporated. So we're not going to be doing some kind of high level academic analysis here. I could give a two or three hour lecture on this and get in every nook and cranny and every citation and we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna have some fun as if me and you were at the library together. This is how I party. This is, this, is, this is partying for me, doing research. I love to research. So let's take a look at, uh, I just if you did a, do a search on Google Books for Steve Jobs, Errett. So I did Steve Jobs and then Errett. Uh, there's a number of different books that come up and articles or whatever. So this first thing that came up is this uh, Bloomberg Business Week from 2011 that was kind of a memorial to Steve Jobs recounting his past. And if you you can do little searches if you want to say search in this book. You're also going to come away with this <laughs> from this video with some research skills if you haven't thought like this. But so, uh, yeah, Google Books is a great resource where you can get access to a lot of books. Sometimes there's things you want to read you can't access because it's blocked. But there's a whole lot of things that's available, especially if you're just in the initial stage of doing research. Great resource. Been using it for years and years, and it's. I'm glad to see that they continue to update it. Uh, and that it actually gets better and better. So in this article, the first place that Eric is mentioned is down here. So if we, if, uh, let me see if I can get a little closer so you can be sure to read this. So talk about his high school, graduated high school in 1972. Do, do, do. Let's just go down to where it says the teachings of Arnold Eric fascinated him. Eret, a 19th century physician from Prussia, 
Wrong, sir. Wrong. <laughs> We're going to get a lot of these wrong, sir, wrongs today because, you know, this is what we do. We at least get your information right. If you're writing an article and you're a researcher and you're something you're being paid to research and write, at least get the facts straight. Arnold Eret was from Baden, Germany. As far as I know, that was not considered Prussia. That was considered Germany. Everything I've ever seen places Arnold Eret as German, from Germany, not from Prussia. So, all right. Then, he was not a physician. He was, a pro- he was an artist. He was a professor of art that mastered natural healing because natural healing wasn't going to come from the medical establishment it was going to come from outside of the burgeoning medical establishment that was professor arnold Eret. wasn't a physician he was he, people call him a naturopathic that whatever he was a healer professor arnold Eret is a healer there's a difference so at this point in Steve's life, he was getting really interested in Arnold Eret. He was checking out Zen Buddhism. And uh, some more problems here. The Eret diet was heavy on figs, nuts, grated horseradish, and honey. Now, for those of you that, that know that's been following us, you've read the Mucus's Diet book, you already know how I feel about this sentence. This is preposterous. This is ridiculous. The mucus's diet healing system is not heavy on figs, nuts, grated horseradish, and honey. And millions of people read this article, and they're coming away with Arnold Eret is heavy on figs, nuts, grated horseradish, and honey. Granted, that's mentioned once under a specific context that I that I won't mention here because it's. It's not the core of the mucus's diet. It's not the core methodologies or philosophies. It makes no sense. You got to bear with me. We're, we're going to have a few of these because it gets on my nerves when these people that are supposed to be professional writers and researchers can't do their due diligence to at least get the bare minimum of, of the facts right. It's ridiculous. So anyway... And if you want a succinct, quick little, well, what is the mucus's diet healing system? The transitional methodology where you transition towards a diet of fruits and green leafy vegetables and systematically implement ancillary therapies such as fasting, colon irrigation, sunbathing, exercise, breathe, breath work, so on and so forth. If you need that, if you need a quick summary. That's what should have been written there, not this nonsense. Again, I apologize. Get, you know, it's my stuff, man. Don't don't mess don't mess it up. Don't mess this stuff up. Come on. So then here they got a picture of Arnold Eret, and he's fa- he's fascinated by Arnold Eret, 19th century Prussian physician. No, he wasn't Prussian. He wasn't a physician. He was a healer. Who advocated, and no, he didn't advocate a diet of figs, nuts, horseradish, and honey. Then the next part says, The fruitarian, shoeless Buddhist, and mendicant ex-student listened in on classes too, and was transfixed by one particular, a course on calligraphy. It was beautiful, historical, artistically subtle, in a way that science can't capture, and I found it fascinating and so then it continues on with his life a bit but that's uh, that's about all we're going to get out of that one let's move on to the next book this is the four lives of steve jobs and if we search inside this book so let's just search for Eret, just to and there's a couple different mentions of Eret. And uh, we'll go right to the chapter four, the founding of, of what? What's that say? I can't, I can't read it. 
Oh, the, the founding of Apple. Okay, cool. So again, we, we kind of, they prior to this, they give a little bit more context, talk about what he was doing before 1975, which he got introduced to the Mucus Diet, that kind of thing. But down here, you say Steve Jobs and his, uh, uh, had found his friend Dan uh, Cock, Cock, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, cock? Cock? I, should, <laughs> I probably should know that, but I don't. Uh, while the trip to India had ended in disappointment, the penchant for alternative experiences persisted, although to a much lesser extent. In his spare time, Jobs continued experimenting with the fruit diet touted by Dr. Eret, uh, one which consisted of fresh and dried fruits and seeds. So again, problematic because the mucus's diet healing system is a system, a sophisticated system in which transitional methodology is out the foundation of it. But again, these are folks that may might not have even read the mucus's diet healing system book. They got some secondary sources, secondary biased sources biased against mucus's diet healing system and arnold Eret. they didn't call me or the people that i know who studied arnold Eret and his work for the past 20 30 or 40 years so again do your research you're gonna write a paper do some research and, fit and make sure it's right and he said under the heat of the blazing sun jobs and uh, a cock found themselves on an Oregon farm they had a ball all the while laughing and in good spirits as though it was their final encore performance of the uh, carelessness of youth they enjoyed this last interlude to the fullest and would uh, go on to sometimes recall it with sweet nostalgia for 10 particularly happy and serene days the two friends ate only one fruit which they spent all day picking at robert's apple farm what fruit was that that they ate only on this little trip apples they ate nothing but apples and Steve Jobs was known to do apple fasts and to do fruit fast because he was an aspiring fruitarian I wrote an article that you can, years ago, I wrote an article about Steve Jobs and the, the problematic nature of what he was trying to do. He didn't follow, like many other people, he didn't follow Arnold Eretz's advice. So he read the book, it, it, somewhere else it says he read Rational Fasting first, so he was already sort of oriented to the fasting concept, and then when he got to the Mucus's Diet part, he was trying to push the envelope. And he himself admits that he dove into it in his nutso way, quote, he said the word nutso, called himself nutso. And so my message has always been one of transition, one of system. Examine the system, get into the actual methodology, actually see what Professor Arnold Eret had to say. And don't just go on Wikipedia or go online and try to look for the first article that is probably definitely going to be biased against. Now, you can say that my work is biased toward, but when you look at it, I, I provide citations. I provide exact quotes all through my work. I'm quote, and you make the decision. I will quote. Arnold Eret, and I'll give my interpretation. You don't have to agree with my interpretation, but you can't argue with the quote, the fact. And so, again, they're supposed to be professional writers and researchers. I'm not seeing it. I'm not impressed. The Bite in the Apple, a memoir of my life with Steve Jobs. See, page 25 let's let's see how this author treats Arnold Eric's work Steve was aware earlier than most that food could use as a way to tap into potential to clear neurosis and develop consciousness 
Arnold Errett's book, Mucusless Diet Healing System, tipped him off to practices that he used to have superior health for years. Okay. Errett's book is one of these quirky gems written early in the 20th century by an odd guy who still has a relatively large following today. Okay. All right. In fact, Eric might well be considered one of the godfathers of today's raw and superfoods movement. Thank you. Thank you, author. Thank you. Finally, Eric proposed that by eating a mucus's diet, people could clear up emotional blocks trapped in their bodies and open themselves into greater levels of physical emotional mental and spiritual clarity and integration steve would recount Eric's notion of how to heal which was to stop eating meat and cheese and sugar he would explain that healing was innate to the body you just had to stop eating the quote bad foods steve told me that with that quote with real foods like apples or salad, your body knows when it's full. But with junk food, the body's intelligence can't get a read on the nutrients and so can't tell you when to stop eating. I love this understanding and recognized it as uh, a higher level of information. So, cool. <laughs> That's all right. I, I can't rant about this one. They gave uh, put some respect. Hey, what do we say we got put put some put some respect on Arnold Eric. Put some respect on his name. You know what I'm saying? Come on, Steve Jobs, the man who thought different. What do we got going on in here? I think there's just a small one. They just pretty much mention the some of the list of books which is actually something i should probably that's another search i could do uh where he has like lists lists of books <clears throat> like 20 and there's a bunch of these different you can find these i mean it but the 20 books that shape steve jobs mucus diet healing system is usually always on the list and it should be again because it inspired apple incorporated the largest corporation on the planet inspired by professor arnold Eric's work oh they want me to buy something nine books that steve jobs thought everyone should read They got this this edition here. Uh, he said Jobs Diet grew more adventurous after reading Mucus's Diet Healing System by 20th century German dietitian Arnold Eret, a guy who a guy who recommends that's sophisticated writing. A guy who recommends practices like intermittent juice fasting. And in in a future video, I'm going to show you that Professor Arnold Eric invented, he coined the phrase intermittent fasting, and yet again, people claim to do intermittent fasting and have no clue who Professor Arnold Eric is. As Steve Urkel would say, read a book. After getting to know Eric's work, Jobs became something of a nutritional extremist, subsisting on carrots for weeks at a time to point uh, to the point that his skin reportedly turned orange that wasn't recommended by Eric, and this isn't cited in so I, i'd have to look in a book i don't know about the, the carrot thing so um that's weird and if you want to read about the ashton kutcher situation i talked about that years ago when it happened in that article I, maybe i'll put the article down below or you can check it out if not go to mucusfreelife.com do a search for Ashton Kutcher and that will come up. But essentially you got a dude that didn't do what the mucus diet healing system says to do to transition transitional methodology. Yeah. You're going to get sick. If you just 
whatever you're eating now, if you're eating a bunch of McDonald's and and fishes and this and that and pizzas, and if you're eating that kind of stuff and all of a sudden you eat nothing but fruit with no transition, no colon irrigation, yeah, you're going to have some problems. And uh, yeah, autobiography of yoga. That, that also got, that kind of got me started. Before I read the Mucus's Diet Healing System, I was into uh, Parahansa Yogananda and Kriya Yoga. Those were really, and that opened me up. So I was ready for the Mucus's Diet Healing System when that came around. Let's get back to the books. So this is just this list of books in this particular one let's say what is this book steve jobs okay this is the the walter isaacson book so this is an example of one the tone uh as i know from what i've read you know steve jobs wife wasn't real happy about the, the when he would get experimental with his diet and so there's a lot of things that are written about Steve Jobs that seem to be somewhat sanitized, at least of that element. And and I'm not saying that what Steve did in ter- when you're talking about actually practice of the mucus diet healing system, he did it wrong. He did what you're not supposed to do, which is to skip over a transition and just aspire to be fruitarian because the ideal of humans being biologically and originally fruit eaters that degenerated into eating meats not evolved into eating meat but degenerated into eating meat that those are high ideals but you have to put that into perspective you're not gonna go 10,000 generations eating wrong and in one lifetime and or overnight or in one weekend, like a lot of people try to do, go back to the original human diet. That's not, that's irrational. And I don't have time to get into the literature to show the, the all of that. So if you don't agree with that humans were once f- fruit eaters or vegan or whatever, then okay, that's fine. But um, we don't we don't have time to get into uh, to those resources, that's another two-hour lecture uh, with a with a lot of citations and a lot of academic sources that we just don't have time for right now. So I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, here's the Isaacson thing. So, but this is where we have the quote about the nutso. Jobs' dietary habits became even more obsessive when he read Mucus' Diet Healing System by Arnold Errett, an early 20th century German-born nutrition fanatic. So again, let's break down the the tonality here. We <laughs> we have the you know let's extract the bias. We, we said we're not you know there's not a whole lot of objectivity involved. So nutrition, well, Arnold Errett. You could make, I think, a more appropriate term would be controversial because he has controversial ideas about the very nature of the concept of nutrition. But fanatic, you're showing your bias there, buddy. Uh, now, if 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 the if the proper research was done. You would make mention that what Steve Jobs did, although very much inspired by the mucus diet healing system and Arnold Errett's work, he did not follow the mucus diet. He did not follow what's called the, the transition diet, which there's transition diet part one, part two, vegetarian recipe section added by Fred Hirsch. It's a whole, there's a whole world there. So no one, nothing in this book is telling anybody to eat nothing but fruit, at least without proper transition. Eric criticizes people that, that he calls them extremists. So this is actually the middle path. Mucus's diet healing system is actually in, in the plant-based world. It is the middle way. 
those of you that's is into the Zen Buddhism or just Buddhist concept, the middle path, the middle way, Nugus's diet healing system is the middle way. Because we're not, it's not 100% junk food veganism over here, but it's also not the extreme fasting and extreme fruit dieting that people have thrust upon it. It's just not. What what did Steve say? Read a book. So then he said he believed in eating nothing but fruits and starches, vegetables, uh, which he said prevented the body from forming harmful mucus. And he advocated cleansing the body regularly f- through prolonged fast. That meant the end of even ramen meal cereal or any bread, grains, or milk. Jobs began warning friends of the uh, mucus dangers lurking in their bagels. And a lot of folks that get into Mucus's diet can relate to Steve Jobs because you'd go through those phases. You go through the phase of like, you know, standing on a corner with a with a soapbox, just like, hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Put down your pus and mucus. Put it down right now and save yourself. I mean, you get into that. Like you want to announce it to the world. What I learned was, you know, I went through that type of phase and then I was like, you know, I'm not going to say nothing anymore. I'm going to wait until people ask me questions about it. Now I get inboxed dozens and dozens of questions almost every day about the mucus's diet. And I got all kinds of free information out there and still ask, asking questions. So that's why I feel <laughs> like I have a mandate to speak on the subject because people are asking about it. You know, so I'm not shoving it down no one's throat. You don't have to watch this video. Don't be uncomfortable. We just, we exploring, exploring ideas. So Job said, I got into it in my typical nutso way. So he realized later in life, yeah, you, you, you a little extreme. The way that you dealt with that, you know, no one said to do two week long apple fast, uh, you know, unless you need, unless you would need that, that would be something on a case by case basis. Somebody that is very knowledgeable about the mucus diet healing system could make a recommendation about a type of fasting protocol, a, the length of a fasting protocol. That's within the context of being a mucus diet healing system practitioner and then an expert is going to be someone that could give that kind of counsel there's not a lot of us out here that can actually do that that have dedicated ourselves to this methodology specifically so that it is that is what it is but hopefully the more of you that really start to dedicate yourself to this information and you going down this path if you're interested in it and at least getting knowledgeable about it i mean isn't it when you want to know what Steve Jobs was into, what inspired your iPhone and your iPad and your Apple whatever computer, you know, I think it was, I think that's good stuff to know. So really quickly, I want to address some things. A lot of people say, well, Steve Jobs died. Thing is, after about 19, I think 84, you know, he wasn't, into the mucus's diet anymore now i made a response that i put on one of these i don't even remember which one of these it was but these are the same video dr mcdougall is kind of a vegan doctor advocate to the stars uh he did a presentation and made an argument about why steve jobs died and i'm not going to get into the details of all of his arguments but what i will do is i'll just read a little bit of this so this was my response to uh, dr mcdougall first i'll say that steve jobs is not a good plant-based case study for us to consider as it is unclear what his diet truly was like post 1980 or or even pre-1980 for that matter, just based on the, you know, word of mouth or what he was saying uh, in interviews. One issue with uh, McDougal's analysis is that he continued to assert that Steve Jobs was vegan or vegetarian to support his pro-vegan defense and cancer argument, 
according to many legitimate sources and regardless of what he may have said in his own autobiography, which needs to be objectively scrutinized uh, in its own right, Jobs was far from consistently vegan or vegetarian post-1983. Uh, Jobs was known to be a fan of sushi. And there are many sources online that support this fact. Jobs' chef uh, was once interviewed. So Jobs had his own sushi chef. So he sushi has nothing to do with the mucus' diet healing system. There's no place and, and no wiggle room to where, like, well... You know, use sushi to transition. No, we're not dealing with sushi in the mucus diet healing system. Uh, if you're addicted to it, we would help you transition off of it, and we would do so really as soon as possible. There's certain things that you want to get off of faster than others. Because not all mucus is built the same. Not all pus and mucus forming foods are equal. Some are way worse than others. There's some mucus forming foods you can eat for 20, 30 years as a part of a transition and you're cool. But there's others that you want to eliminate immediately, you know, and that's all stuff you can check out in the book. But uh, let's take a look at this article just real quick. So here's a picture of Steve in one of his favorite sushi outposts. And they interview his uh, bleh. they interview his sushi chef. So uh, so anyway, so my argument basically is that you know at, yeah, in the 1970s he was in a mode, got really inspired, and again was too extreme, didn't follow the transition diet, and ultimately was not able to sustain the mucus diet healing system in the way that you can sustain it if you practice the transition. I've been practicing the transition diet for 18 years. And I've done, yeah, I've done some long fast and I've done, you know, I've, I've done things that would, that I would, cons that I would not recommend other people do. But I've put my, I'm a researcher. And, and if I, these things that I do that are outside of the confines of the mucus's diet, if or when they don't work, I'm honest about it and say, okay, well, that, that wasn't a good idea. I'm not going to blame Arnold Errett for some experimentation that I did if I step away from the methodology. And so that for me is a, just because there's so many people that have claimed to read the book, they try to be 100% raw food or whatever. They, they basically this extreme kind of stuff. And then when it doesn't work, and they end up going back and they eat this carnivore diet or they you know, all these kinds of things that's happening. Ultimately, what happens is they then blame the mucus diet and Arnold Errett and say it didn't work. It was this and that. You didn't practice the transition in the system. Now, some people think they did and they'll be like, but I did transition. You went too fast in almost every case. You went too fast because a lot of people are coming to the mucus diet from a raw food as background and a raw food as dogma in their mindset. And that is causing a lot of unnecessary pain and suffering in folks that could be finding plateau points for transition and just enjoying life. You know, you're supposed to enjoy life during the transition. You know, no one says you had to be laid up not doing anything just because you transition it. Find something to find that comfortable for you, you know, but but in order to do that, you got to know the principles. This is not a food list diet. You can't just look up the food list and be like, oh, those are mucus forming foods. Then I'm, I'm going to not eat those. So I hope that you found this little excursion, little research project of ours fun and enlightening. And you learned a little something about the mucus diet, learned a little something perhaps about Steve Jobs. I've learned something, as I always do every time I research. So this was a lot of fun. If you like this kind of video, you want to see do some more research projects like this with me, uh, let me know down in the comment section, and I'll come up with a few more of these. These are kind of fun for me to do. If you like them, then we'll, we'll do some more of them. And again, if you don't have the five free recipes to help you get rid of mucus 
go down below, click the link, get those PDFs. And especially if you don't, you've never heard of the Mucus's Diet, you don't know what we're talking about. It is a good introduction to what we're talking about, to the Mucus's Diet healing system. Kind of ease you on into it. Then eventually, you know, you, if you're really serious, you're going to want to get a copy of the Mucus's Diet healing system. I mean, it, it, it just, it is what it is, as they say. If you really want to know what's happening, you got to read that book. There's no way around it. But there's an audiobook version. There's no excuse either. There's audiobook versions. There's a bunch of different languages that the Mucus's Diet is in. We have a Spanish version. There's other editions and versions. We won't talk about editions in this. Uh, get very complicated. But it's important to always be transitioning. Like I was saying, always be cleaning. You know, I'm re- reading this book, Relentless. You know, always be cleaning. Be a cleaner. And we're talking about clean that inside out. Clean clean all of that slime, the sludge, the decades old feces stones, the tapeworms, the I used to get, get this black tar out of my stomach, all that kind of stuff. Get it out. And this this can help. This is gonna help you give you the tools to be able to get this stuff out of your gut out of your system out of your intestines out of your colon don't let that stuff sit in there and become putrid and and acidify why do you think you have damaged cells that so many people have damaged cells in their body i'm not going to use the word i'm not going to use the c word they're damaged cells why does that happen does Does an acid environment damage cells? If you pour acid on your skin, is that going to damage your cells of your body? But what happens when you have putrid, putrid acids, acidic waste internally, when there's no need to have it? Like we don't, we don't have to have 32 feet of acidic, putrid, smelly, disgusting waste in our intestines to live we don't have to have it there so why is it there why has that become normal to have 32 feet of impacted intestines see right there 32 feet of impacted intestines is what a lot of people are walking around with and people wonder why they're in pain and that problems are happening. Imagine all of this. You, you know what? Come on. I mean, it, uh, let's. Uh, I mean, if you if you really want to know, you really want to know what what's happening. Come on. Let's look at this. And this and this would just be a child in thirty two feet of impacted intestines, and people wonder why. This stuff that sits in there, do you think that this feces is alkaline or acidic? And if it is acidic, what do you think that it's doing to your insides? Over years, over, you, you want, is this, you want that? I mean, the, the sad thing is you, ha- you probably have it. If you're not practicing mucus's diet or you're not, you know, you, you don't understand naturopathic methods, colon irrigation, whatever, you know, you don't necessarily have to be mucus diet and do where you clear that out. There are ways to clear that out. As you say, Arnold Harris, the godfather, you know, so you, you, you are inspired by somebody who was inspired by somebody inspired by Professor Arnold Harris at the least if you're into natural methods of healing. But just imagine this. This is what you're dealing with. This doesn't feel good. Why you want all this? And, and I'm speaking from experience as somebody that eliminated pounds and pounds of waste, of feces, strings of mucus, mucoid plaque. I eliminated all that stuff out of my gut when I, years ago when I started practicing the mucus diet. 
Why don't you want to get rid of that? Why do you want to hang on to feces and walk around with pounds of feces? I mean, it's an honest question. I mean, I'm, you might have a good answer for it. I don't know. I mean, but you, you just let me know. Let me know why do you want pounds and pounds of waste in you when we got the tools to help you get rid of it, like right now. Like you don't have to why you don't have to walk around like that. You can walk around like that. And do so rationally. Do so without the Steve Jobs hardcore uh as he said his not so extreme way that he tried to deal with the mucus's diet. You can deal with the mucus's diet right down the middle and you can clear up so many of these issues so quickly. It's time. It's time to really. It's an old school. This is out the. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of these old classic mucoid plaque images are from the uh, Bernard Jensen book. But, yeah, that's that's unfortunate. Somebody got mad at me one time because I showed this picture and they were like well that's a specific disease i mean yeah we 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 get it like yeah that's that that's not everybody goes through that but at the end of the day what were they eating that's always going to be the question what were they eating they eating fruits and green leafy vegetables are they eating sushi and sashishi and whatever kind of whatever eat stuff's being eaten cow cow worms baby cow milk I mean all that stuff there's a cause and an effect and when you're doing something that's against mother nature's laws just because everybody's telling you it's okay you're being educated by these authority figures that this is how we're supposed to live that doesn't make it right and that doesn't mean that you're not going to suffer and pay dearly at some point for not being in line with the laws. Just because you don't know what the laws are does not mean that you will not be slapped in the back of the head by the strong arm of justice, the strong arm of, of justice, Mother Nature. And she's got the strongest arm. You know, Mother Nature pimp and is it's fierce so anyway <laughs> i thank you so much for tuning in this has been fun until next time peace love and breath